there! This is Galena, which is a silver and lead ore that I retrieved from an abandoned mine that I own. This is a pure silver ring that I made from the same Galena. To get from here to here is not easy. It took me a few weeks and trips to a few states. But in the end, I ended up with this beautiful ring. And the process of that is what this video is all about. All right, so let's talk history, mining, and how to turn this into pure silver. For a bit of context, right now I am standing at Cerro Gordo. And back in the 1800s, this was a mining boom town. There was 4,000 residents here, hundreds of buildings, and it was just straight out of the Wild West. And the primary mineral that they were mining was Galena. And Galena has a lot of lead in it, a little bit of silver, some sulfide, some silica, some other little minerals. But at its peak, this town was refining 70 tons of Galena every single day. And if you adjust that for inflation, they pulled something like $500 million of the minerals out of these hills surrounding me. Mining in any real capacity stopped here about 100 years ago. And since then, it sat here mostly abandoned, you know, just another ghost town of the American West. And I bought this town about three years ago with the hopes of bringing it back to life, you know, preserving the history here and learning about it so I can teach future generations. And obviously, since this was a mining town, understanding mining, especially the mining of Galena, is very important. So, a few months ago, I set out to create the first batch of Cerro Gordo silver the way they might have 150 years ago. And in that process, I did something called assaying. And assaying is where you take a small representative sample of the ore within a mine and you try to extrapolate out how much of the you know, precious metals there might be in that. And when I set out to do that, uh, it took about four days and I had to add all sorts of chemicals, I had to heat it up, I failed a bunch of different batches, and in the end, I was left with about two grams of silver or about enough where if you would have sneezed strongly, it would have blown away. But to me, it was more just that excitement of learning and that passion for understanding, especially understanding my home, you know, Cerro Gordo, this place that I've been living at for almost two years now. Um, at the end of the day, that excitement wore off a little bit, you know, and while the process of going through it was amazing, the result left a little bit to be desired. And so I just wanted to make a little bit more, you know, do more than just a representative sample, but actually refine an amount of Galena where I could have something in the end, you know, maybe even create a ring or some memento that I could carry around with me and remind me of the process and remind me about this town that I love so much. And so luckily, right around the same time, I met a guy named Jason. And Jason owns Mount Baker Mining up in Washington, where they manufacture mining equipment and he just knows so much more about smelting and refining than I do. So I invited Jason down and we took a few days just walking around Cerro Gordo. And at the end, we had some Galena, but if I was gonna make a ring or a necklace or something else, I was gonna need a lot more Galena. But luckily, I live in a town known for its Galena deposits. And although those miners back in the 1800s did a pretty good job of getting it all out, I know of a few spots where they left some behind. And one in particular is in between the 400 and the 550 level. There, if you get on this old ore chute, some of the miners left a wall of Galena. And so for my first stop in creating a Cerro Gordo ring is to go back down to the Union Mine, back to the 400, and rope down to where that wall of Galena is. So we got the rock hammer. We're gonna try to get some more uh, Galena out of here to refine down into some silver, maybe make some jewelry. So we got that. So look at all this Galena. You can see the vein there. These pieces down here are just huge pieces, you know. That's some high grade stuff. You, know, you can tell how close together the little faces are. That's some high grade stuff right there. Woo. Just 
Galena. <laughs> 50, 60, 100 pounds of this Galena. And we're about to make ourselves some silver. So at the end of that adventure, I had 100 pounds of Galena ready to refine. Unfortunately, that Galena was here at Cerro Gordo and Jason's shop in Washington. So how do you get 100 pounds of Galena from California to Washington? The United States Postal Service, of course. You know, as they say, if it fits, it ships. All right, it's time to take this and send it to Jason. And the plan was that I would fly up at a later date, join it, and we would refine from there. You know, he has a much bigger shop, a lot more equipment, and is just much more knowledgeable about smelting than I am. All right, so I'm packing up to head to Jason, and I've already shipped him probably 70, 80 pounds of Galena. But as I do, I was, take, I was doing a mine exploration yesterday, and I did come across quite a bit of Galena. There's probably 60 pounds here. And you know what? I do get a carry-on item, you know? So I'm going to shove all of this in here. And we are going to bring Jason another surprise 60 pounds of Galena. I was thinking I have a little bit of a surprise that I'm going to leave here at Stovepipe Wells. I don't think I need all of this Galena. So this piece, if you happen to come to Stovepipe Wells in the middle of Death Valley, will be underneath this marker here. I'm gonna do it when nobody's looking. Now you know. Dang it, Cerro Gordo? Are you a descendant of Cerro Gordo? Are you a descendant of Cerro Gordo? No, no, no. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for having Cerro Gordo now. I don't know where your relatives are. Made it. Today's the day. It's gonna be a big day. Gonna eat breakfast, pack up. Gonna meet Jason in about, oh, an hour from now. And uh, surprise him with the bonus Galena I brought. And hopefully, at the end of the day, when I'm sitting back down here, we got a bunch of silver. That's the hope anyways. Who knows how these things go, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. Hey. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Got my camera. Yeah, right on. I got a, I got a little stowaway for us. You got here? I'm gonna pick this up. <laughs> oh, oh, <what> <laughs> You got another 50 pounds? Five out of 50 pounds. How'd you get that in the plane? The security did stop me, yeah. but uh, got it here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I brought your present, or I have your present for me. There they are. They made it? Look, if it fits, it ships. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit worse for wear, but I think everything is in there. That's awesome. Look at that. It made it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got some more to add to it, and so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw out our back here. Yeah. All right, well, we got, what, 100 plus, 120, 30 pounds? Yeah, sounds wow. all right. Cool, let's turn it into some silver. I'll crush this box first. Okay. And then we'll put the crushed in there, and we'll just kind of cycle through a couple times. Sounds good. So I've got our little scale here. It only goes up to five pounds, 
but I'm gonna weigh out. We'll start with five pounds of each bucket. So brought in the backpack in the airport, shipped up earlier. Yeah, and, and this stuff here in my left hand is, is way better quality galena, I guess. There's a lot more of it per, per pound or ton. This stuff has a little bit more gang minerals in it, but I played with some of this stuff when I got back. Uh, I brought a couple pounds with me uh, when I got back, and this stuff was running about 160 ounces of silver per ton. And so my hope is that this is even better because yeah. there's more galena. Yeah. So we're gonna take half and half, mix them together, and uh, see how much silver we can cover from 10 to 20 pounds. Cool. So today when up in Washington, our goal is to take the galena and bring it down to just silver and lead. Remember, galena is made up of a lot of lead, a little bit of silver, some sulfur, some silica, maybe some zinc, and all these other impurities. So we need to get rid of those. You know, we need to take them out. And to do that, you create a flux that would eventually create slag. And so slag is basically your flux, your additives that you're adding in to pull out the impurities. And in this case, we added soda ash and iron. And those two things in, went in with the galena, we heated it up, and then the iron and the ash are pulling out the impurities. You know, they're pulling out anything that isn't silver and lead. All right, so here is our furnace we're gonna be using for our first smelt. I'll take the lid off. And that is our crucible. favorite parts of this whole thing is just seeing molten metal. I don't know, I, I, it's kind of like you just become a bug attracted to a light. <laughs> and when I did my process here, I had maybe this much molten metal, but when you see 20 pounds of galena just swaying and liquefied, it's, it's mesmerizing and it's exciting. Jelly thingy, about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit on top. So it's still quite warm. <laughs> this is the moment of truth. Moment of truth. What are we looking for? Or what are we not looking for? We are really hoping yes. that I flip this over <laughs> and we have a pyramid mm -hmm. or the slag might break up, but we'll have slag on the bottom and a cone of metal on the top. Right. And if I did it right, the WD-40 works that I sprayed in there. Yeah. It'll slip right out and it okay. won't stick to the sides. That looks pretty promising. Looks like a cone of metal to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. There it is. There we go. That's a cone of metal. So we reduced all that lead in there yeah. down into this pile of metal. Dang. 14.2. Minus 1.8. Whatever that is. 12.4. So we started at 20 pounds of the galena and we're down to 12 pounds of silver and lead. That's right. Yep. And so that at the end of day one, things were a success. We were able to get it down just to the base of silver and lead. And the next day is when we're gonna start the parks process. All right. All right, day two. Yeah, come on in. We're back day two with uh, our pyramid from yesterday. And what, what happens a lot of times is the slag will hydrate overnight from okay. the moisture in the air, especially around here because it's so moist. Yeah. 
and so the slag just kind of flakes off. Ah. So we get all the all the slag off. Yeah, and left with just the silver and lead. Yeah, exactly. So day two is when we begin the Parks process. And the Parks process is a process where you add zinc to the silver and lead, and the silver will bind to the zinc, but the zinc will repel the lead. So at the end, you'll be left with a layer of crust that is just zinc and silver. All the zinc and silver is pretty much hard on the surface there. So I'm gonna try and just scrape it off with getting as little lead as I can. So Jason started scraping off the crust slowly using the scooper he had. And we realized that we were scraping off a lot, you know, a lot more than we might have thought about. And I think in the end what happened is we added a little bit too much zinc. You know, these things happen. And so when we were done, we took it and attempted to cupel it to bring out some more of the impurities in the zinc. And a cupel is basically something that allows non-precious metals, base metals, to oxidize, you know, to go away. And back in the day here at Cerro Gordo, they would make cupels out of bone ash because you're looking for calcium. You know, they can also make them out of seashells. And in a pinch, you can make it out of concrete. And so up in Washington, we created a big concrete cupel. We put in our zinc and silver mixture, and it just wasn't quite working how we would hope. You know, again, it's an experimentation process. Luckily, none of the metals were lost. You know, they might have gotten back together a little bit, but they weren't lost. So we took that back out, and we decided to use pre-made cupels. So my hope is, is that when we pour this crucible into the cone mold, We'll be left with a little bit of metal at the bottom. It'll pro hopefully it'll be silver and a little bit of lead. Hopefully all the zinc's gone, and then we can take the little bit of metal we have at the bottom, put it in our electric cupelling furnace with a real cupel, and here in half an hour we'll have our Cerro Gordo silver. All right. You know, the whole time I was going through this process, it just kept blowing my mind that 150 years ago, in the heyday of Cerro Gordo, they knew how to do this. You know, it's not the easiest process. But then if you really think about it, you know, 150 years on the timeline of humans refining minerals is a blip. You know, there's evidence that humans were pulling silver from lead five or 6,000 years ago in modern day Turkey. You know, the ancient Egyptians would use galena underneath their eyes to stop the glare of the desert. And if we skip forward a couple thousand years, you know, in the Roman Empire, galena mining was huge. You know, it was such a big industry that there's a line in the Greenland ice caps from all of the smoke that was created from the Romans mining galena, you know, and they would use it for a lot of things, you know, the English word plumbing comes from plumbum, which is Latin for lead, because basically all of the plumbing systems in ancient Rome would have been made out of lead. You know, that's why also PB in the periodic elements, plumbing, you know, there you go. <laughs> and the coinage, you know, any of the silver they would have got would have gone into the coins in ancient Rome. To think that I'm now standing here, you know, going through the same process that not just the miners at Cerro Gordo did, but the, the ancient Romans and even before that, people have been doing for 6,000 years. It's just this really cool connection to history that I love. You know, I feel it quite often here at Cerro Gordo. It just makes you feel like you're part of something larger than the everyday activities that you're doing. And I think um, beyond anything else that I've 
felt at Cerro Gordo, I feel that connection, that connection to history, to the past, to the future. You know, it's a reminder that our time is finite, you know, and it reminds me just to try to enjoy it and do what I can while I'm here. You know, there's some guy mining this Galena a couple thousand years ago that had hopes and dreams, and there'll probably be a guy in a couple thousand more years mining this Galena. You know, maybe by then they'll be mining it off of an asteroid, but the fact remains that the Galena might stick around and we won't. And so I love doing things like this, you know, understanding that process and uh, it just gets me pumped up. And so enough ranting for me, let's get back to making the silver. But that was something that I thought about throughout this and I thought, you know, I'd share in this video. Cut it into strips. Yep. And then we put it in our cupels. There we got our four little beads. Yep. There it is, Cerro Gordo Silver for you. Cerro Gordo Silver. All right, but since we want them in one big one, all right. put them all back we'll in. put them all back in one. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> How much were we hoping for? Let's start there. We were, we were hoping for about 12, 12 grams. grams. Yep, 12 <laughs> grams. It's the you, moment of truth. You do the honors. Ooh, oh, there we go. 13 almost. 13. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we did it. Got about 13 grams of silver there. All right, so we started with about 20 pounds of this, which is Galena from the Union Mine. And from that, we got this, which is about 12 pounds of pure lead. And this, which is 13 grams of pure silver. So we go from this to this to this, and now hopefully from this down to a ring. 13 grams of silver, which I think is about a half a troy ounce, which might not seem like a lot, but that's plenty to make some type of jewelry. And then Jason told me that for the rest of the 80 pounds, he'd refine it after I left. You know, there's just time constraints. I had to get back home. And so with that, I packed up my backpack once again, and I took basically the same route back here to Cerro Gordo that I took there, instead this time clutching pure silver, which was kind of the goal from the beginning. After all that time, pure Cerro Gordo silver hits the yellow grade road once again. It was a lot of days, a lot of travel, but I'm bringing pure Cerro Gordo back to the town. That wasn't the end of this story. You know, from there, I wanted something that I could wear, you know, something cool that would remind me of the experience and just remind me why I'm here, you know, why I'm at Cerro Gordo. And over the past few months, I've been communicating with this person on Instagram named Alyssa. Hey friends. And Alyssa has this amazing jewelry store called Chaparral Jewelry. And what she specializes in is these rings with topography maps on them. It all starts with this. 
uh, wax ring tube. I will be slicing a portion of this off to then hand carve it down into what will eventually be your ring. You know, if I'm trying to create something to commemorate my time here and my love of these hills, why not create a map of the hills that this ore came out of to create the silver that created this ring? You know, it's just this amazing circle of life that I couldn't be more excited about. Okay, headed back down the hill with the silver to get it over to the jeweler. Hi, my name is Jenna and I'm the caster that's going to turn the wax that Alyssa carved into Cerro Gordo silver using the lost wax casting process. The first step is taking a piece of wax rod and melting it onto your original master to create a channel that the metal can flow into later. Now you can see I've taken that ring with the channel and I've attached it onto what I call a base. That's the base of the mold that we're gonna pour the plaster into. I've brought my rubber base in with the part attached to it and I have these metal sleeves I'm just going to slip over the part like so and that gives me the mold that I'm going to pour my plaster into. This is pure silver and to make it jewelry grade sterling we need to alloy it down using copper. Our sterling silver is 92.5% pure silver. So I've done the calculation on how much copper to add and I'm getting it up to 13.8 grams. There we go. So that is going to be melted down to make the ring. And this is the negative cavity that the metal is going to be shot into. I'm gonna load it up. We're loading the, the flask into the centrifuge. That's what this jig is called. And the centrifuge is a spring-loaded barrel that is going to, once it's pulled and the metal is melted, it's going to centrifugally force metal into the a couple minutes for the metal to cool down and this is the most exciting slash um, anxiety ridden part of the process because we're gonna find out if it worked because we made a plaster mold it's a waste mold it's a one-time mold if this didn't come out that carving that Alyssa did would be lost and have to be redone so fingers crossed let's see how it looks <laughs> of your ring it is almost completely done and will be put in the mail on its way back to Cerro Gordo and onto your finger um, so I'm just gonna touch up the topography a little bit just to make it pop with some extra shine and then I will ship it off to you And here it is, a silver ring made from that same galena you saw me mining at the beginning of the video. I'm just absolutely blown away by how it came out. It's beautiful, it's the perfect reminder, and I just couldn't think of a better way to keep Cerro Gordo in mind. You know, and I absolutely could not have done this without the help of Jason, Alyssa, Jenna, the TSA guys who let me get the galena through security. 
and everybody else. And I am just so, so thankful to have this come into production. And I'm also very excited to say that we're going to make one more of these. You know, as a kind of a small thank you to all of you who tuned in and helped connect all the dots between me, Jason, Alyssa, and Jenna, we're gonna make one more of these and give it away to somebody. So it's free to sign up. There's a link below. Uh, in a month, it'll randomly select a winner. And I hope whoever gets the other one of these cherishes it forever. You know, it's, uh, it's a material that hasn't been made here in a very long time. And it's a design that you won't find anywhere else in the world. So check out below and uh, maybe you can have one of these around your own finger. So as always, thank you guys so, so much for checking out this video. You know, the support of this channel over the last 18 months has just made so much possible. You know, it's truly helped rebuild this town. It's helped get the block up here. It's helped reconstruct the American Hotel. It's helped, you know, make this ring that we saw today. And it's just that power of collaboration just warms my heart. You know, it's something that wouldn't have been possible without this YouTube channel. And each of you guys have assisted in doing that. So thank you so, so much. For me, uh, this ring is something that I'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life, you know? Just understanding the process that went into it makes it that much more special for me. You know, it's what gives me that same feeling as restoring a building here. You know, knowing what went into it makes it just that much more important to you. And it allows you just to have that connection with that item that I don't think otherwise might have existed. So thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you have a great week. I hope you find something to work on yourself. You know, if you go through the whole process of something new for you, find some new type of passion or hobby out there. And until next time, I'm signing out and I'll see you guys next week.